this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. I want to share with you in this latest Moon Family Sedan tepid jam what is arguably the most interesting story in all of crypto at the moment. At this point, I'm going to assume that about 100% of humans listening to this, if not exactly 100% of you, are aware that FTX, the world's second to largest cryptocurrency exchange, uh, it turns out it's an outright Ponzi scheme run by Sam Bankman Fried, known as SBF for short. Well, SBF. Uh, he's not been arrested yet. This occurred two freaking weeks ago. And what has happened since has been rather regrettable. In fact, this uh, this meme that's on your screen right now, I think pretty well sums it up. It's uh, It shows a bunch of those gray-skinned people that uh, are frequently used in, in memes for various purposes and on the, the heads of individual uh, people here on the screen uh, are... Ma mainstream media news outlets like ABC, uh, NBC, CBS, CNN, Wall Street Journal, Forbes, so on and so forth, and they're all saying the same thing, which is, quote, how unfortunate Sam Bankman frieds philanthropic goals will never be realized. So think about this. We have a gigantic Ponzi scheme, fraudulent, scammed. People have lost billions and billions and billions of dollars, and the mainstream media is writing puff pieces about SBF, and uh, talking about how it's just kind of a shame that because of some unfortunate business instances that the philanthropy side of what was going on, now it's not going to be realized any further. Oh, boo-hoo. Uh, what about what's actually going on and, and accurately framing the degree to which this is devastating? And who did what? Who are the bad guys here? Why, why, why isn't mainstream media calling out who the bad guys are? Well, everybody that's paying attention to this case uh, is sick of this. The good news is, if you're on Twitter, you actually are getting the real news. It's crazy to think that's where you have to go to get the real news now, but I kid you not. All the latest breaking stuff, accurate information, it's actually found on Twitter, not in the mainstream media. And everybody's sick of this, including Ben Armstrong, who is also known as BitBoy Crypto. Of course, runs the very popular YouTube cryptocurrency channel BitBoy Crypto with uh, close to 1.5 million subscribers. Well... BitBoy Crypto, not very happy with SBF, nobody is. And he actually flew down to the Bahamas to confront the fraudster SBF. And so I'm going to share with you uh, the latest updates, at least at this point in time as I'm recording here. Um, I've got a bunch of tabs over those. You look at the screen, you can see. And, um, and so I'll just tell you this. Um, BitBoy reveals the reason SBF has not been arrested. Uh, he's also trying to hunt down the $121 million in property that SBF's parents reportedly own, uh, but, but found has something interesting in investigating that. Uh, also, BitBoy is reporting that SBF is about to get kicked out of his $39 million penthouse uh, roughly within the next 24 hours or so at the point that I'm recording this. And, uh, and I'll show you pictures, by the way, of the interior. That place is sick. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, and also, hilariously... BitBoy uh, was also given SBF's cell phone number through uh, through his personal contacts, and he called and texted SBF after SBF blocked BitBoy Crypto on Twitter. And um, the people are also asking, you know, if what BitBoy Crypto doing is doing, is it illegal stalking? And attorney Jeremy Hogan jumped in and actually provided some clarity on that. And uh, we also have an update from the authorities in the Bahamas and it looks like they're actually part of the problem and perhaps in on this. So there's a lot to unpack. I figured perhaps the best way to do it is to just go through what Ben Armstrong has actually been sharing on social media here. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And uh, most of what I'm going to share with you in this latest Moon Family Sedan tepid jam is in chronological order here. And so this all started yesterday. And, and by the way, even leading up to this, I remember seeing, I didn't pull up for this video, but Ben Armstrong on Twitter, I remember him saying something like, I'm going to have to or I'm going to uh, fly to the Bahamas you know, to, to look into what's going on with SBF, and I'm paraphrasing there. And I thought it was kind of funny, because like, yeah, I would love for that to happen, but I thought he was just kind of joking. And then, you know, I, I wake up yesterday, and I'm like, holy crap, Ben Armstrong is in the Bahamas confronting SBF. Like, he actually did it. I thought that was the coolest damn thing here. And so there's this tweet. So this, start, this part starts yesterday afternoon, and I'm going to take it all the way up through what's happening this evening. 
Story's continually developing, though. But anyway, so as of uh, yesterday, where the start of yesterday afternoon, Ben Armstrong tweeted out the following. Before Sam and I can talk, he has to unblock me. Everyone tag SBF and tell him to unblock me. We just want to talk. He has a story to tell, and we want him to, him, to give him the opportunity to talk. He's clearly chomping at the bit to talk. Here is your chance, Sam. And then there's this. Uh, just and this is 3:40 p.m. That's Central Standard Time, my time zone. And uh, Ben Armstrong shared a few pictures and wrote the following: According to Twitter, this is Sam's Corolla, complete with pills in the front seat. Maybe someone can identify what they are. And an MSI laptop in the back. SPF, look at your window, bud. I just want to talk. Come tell your story. So just out of nowhere, he's getting all this context from Ben Armstrong. And he has to he has to have been, I would imagine, quite surprised. But literally, he could look out the window and just like wave at Ben Armstrong if he wanted to. And so he found the, he found the guy's car. And these are the pictures that, that he shared. Um, so I just, I just, and when I first saw this yesterday afternoon, I just, I just I, a couple things with her. First of all, it's hilarious because. This is this is the type of thing that people talk about doing, but nobody actually does it. He actually did it. And I think it's incredible because, to be honest with you, the mainstream media, which is why I started the video talking about this, the mainstream media media, they're not doing their job. Ben Armstrong is doing the mainstream media's job for them. And that sucks because he, sh he shouldn't have to be the one doing it. But the, the fact that he's even going down there and he is getting some answers, actually, we'll see as we go through this, uh, I I'll say this. As long as he's not breaking the law, I support what he's doing. Because, and don't feel sorry for SB. That guy, I don't think any of you would. But, uh, I mean, Kevin O'Leary does. But, he, like, he literally scammed people out of billions and billions and billions of dollars. SBF should probably go to jail for the rest of his life, based on the magnitude of what he, he has destroyed people's lives. Absolutely destroyed them. Inexcusable. Uh, here's a video clip. It's just playing silently in the background here, but Ben Armstrong wrote, Sam, unblock me so we can talk. So he's just showing that he's really there. Just like, <laughs> looking around the place here. You got to love this stuff. I'm not the only one that got a kick out of it. You can see my fellow extra YouTuber, the bearable bull. He also just wrote a bunch of you know, like five laughy emojis. How could you not laugh at some of this? Like the fact this is actually happening and it's good too. And I hope it makes SPF feel uncomfortable because he shouldn't be feeling comfortable after defrauding to the tune of billions of dollars in his nearly $40 billion penthouse. Um, and then there was this from uh, AJ, who is a, uh, a writer for BitBoy Crypto. He shared this on his Twitter. It's a video of, of, uh, <laughs> of, of Ben Armstrong just leaning up against SPF's Corolla right there, his everyday man car just hanging out, leaning up against it. He won't come out. Um, trying to get him on the phone. Uh, and then there was this. So this has just Ben Armstrong showing that uh, SBF had blocked him on Twitter. Uh, and then there's this. Uh, this is at 528 p.m. yesterday evening. He wrote, it's amazing to me. A staffer at the Albany said we are the first people to come looking for Sam WTF. Uh, now, the Albany is the uh, the complex where Sam's penthouse is. It's nearly $40 million penthouse. And I understand that he was living there with like, some, I think it was like nine other people. And it was also used for work purposes, even though technically there was a separate uh, headquarters address. That's where like, you know, the let's call them the C-suite team, if you want to loosely call them that. That's what they were doing. But it's more like they were partying and using perhaps substances that weren't entirely legal and, you know, just stealing, stealing billions from people. In fact, they didn't even have a damn accounting department. They didn't have an accounting department. Are you kidding me? The world's second largest cryptocurrency exchange. And so here again, a staffer at the Albany here, where, where the penthouse is, says that uh, Ben Armstrong, like they're the first people to come looking for SBF. It's been two weeks. How the hell is that? Where are the journalists on this damn planet? It took BitBoy Crypto flying from the United States down to the Bahamas for, for SBF to get his first knock on the door. That's incredible. I just, I, I can't imagine, like, if it were a couple decades back that, uh, the, you know, the mainstream media wouldn't have looked in more. I just feel like things have changed and turned. And perhaps in this case, it's even more so because uh, it seems like a lot, a lot of people feel like they've been paid off. There's been a lot of money donated to a lot of these publications that could be a factor in it. Uh, it, it, I don't know if it's that with you know, you know blended with a bunch of apathetic journalists or, or what, just lazy? I, I, you tell me, folks. 
Uh, and then there was this. Uh, here's a picture of Ben next to uh, uh, a bull. It looks like the same as the bull that's uh, right outside the New York Stock Exchange. And Ben Armstrong wrote, Hey Sam, I'm still here for you when you want to talk. No bull. Put me on the guest list and I'll be there in the morning. That was at 6.48 p.m. Central Standard Time last night. And then there's this. Uh, ben Armstrong wrote, Sam, come on, my guy. And this is at 8.36 p.m. And he shared this screen grab. This is from uh, <laughs> Ben's text messages with uh, Sam Bankman Freed's cell phone. Now, obviously, SBF uh, didn't respond. But take a look at this. At 7.06 p.m. Ben's time there in the Bahamas, he said, Hey, Sam, it's Ben. Let's talk. You should get to tell your side of the story. I'm here whenever you want to talk. And you can see right onto the, for those of you looking at the screen, after that second text from BitBoy Crypto to SBF, you can see that he read it at 7.34 p.m. So Ben Armstrong knows that SBF saw those messages. And then <laughs> Ben wrote to him and said, Sam, you have read receipts on and didn't respond, LOL. Come on, bro. <laughs> He probably forgot he even had read receipts on. Not working out so well for him. And he he looked at the rest. There's more text down the, down the, the road. Just I'll get to him. I'm just trying to do this chronologically. But there are more texts. And he just keeps seeing them. And then not responding. Uh, and then Ben Armstrong tweeted out this. Uh, 10.44 p.m. last night, the 26th. To be clear, I, nor my company, has ever had $1 in FTX as an exchange. I'm just down here because no one has been willing to represent the people and confront Sam. Yeah, and again, that's still astonishing. And we'll, we'll get to the part as to why it seems that there hasn't been action taken against not. And it's repulsive if the reporting that I'm hearing at this point is true. And I have no reason to think it's not true, but uh, pretty disgusting if so. Uh, ben Armstrong then said at uh, 7.01 a.m., so now we're at today, this morning, My <laughs> there was a tweet from Presale World that says, Enjoy the trip away, dude. Hopefully it can be relaxing for you. And then Ben Armstrong said, my relaxation comes from knowing Sam has no relaxation. And I like that. <laughs> uh, then there was this. Uh, this, is at a, a, this was back to last night, so it did jump around a little bit. I mostly had these chronologically, though. Um, last night at 11.13 p.m., Ben Armstrong tweeted out, Sam will be kicked out of the Albany within 48 hours. Can you imagine living there knowing how many enemies he has? who now see how easy it is to get in? If you are his neighbor, would you want this kind of attention in your million dollar compound? Yeah, probably not. And also, given that um, he's only got, at least from this point in time that I'm recording this, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 24 hours remaining in his penthouse, uh, he's gonna have to exit somewhere. And it just makes me wonder, is Ben Armstrong gonna be able to catch him? He's gotta exit somewhere. He can't stay holed up in there forever. I hope so. I just, I really hope so. <laughs> um, and then there was also this. There's this video clip. This is a video clip of Ben Armstrong uh, getting kicked out of the Albany by security. And so the, the, the clip's just playing silently, but Ben Armstrong wrote on Twitter, throwback to when the security guard escorted us out. Brian was pretty cool, to be honest. Sam, Barb, and Joe are the ones who made him do it. Sam, I'll come back if you put me on the guest list. And so Barb and Joe, those would be uh, Sam's parents. Now, um, Jeremy Hogan responded, though, because, again, there, I saw a number of people uh, questioning if what Ben Armstrong was doing was illegal. And Jeremy Hogan jumped in to uh, kind of you know, answer that concern. And he simply wrote the following. Uh, oh, actually, maybe that was on a separate... No, oh yeah, no, it's it's on this thread. I just got to go a little bit lower. So let me just do this in order. So Jeremy Hogan did respond here and he said, here's the Bahamas criminal penal code for fraud. Seems like taking people's money under false pretenses fits the bill. Has anyone filed a police report against FTX? Might be something to find out or do while you are there. And by the way, we're going to circle back around to that uh, because a great question attorney Hogan has had there and... Uh, Ben Armstrong did look into that. We're going to circle back around to that, though. Um, and I I'm not going to read this, but this is part of the penal code that was cited, 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 uh, was cited by attorney Jeremy Hogan. So just pause here if you want to read through that. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I don't think it's quite necessary. You kind of get the gist of what's going on here. Um, and then somebody wrote to Hogan and said, couldn't this be considered stalking? And I guess fair enough question, sure. Uh, Jeremy Hogan said, I didn't see anything that would make what Ben is doing criminal. But I did learn that in the Bahamas, you can get divorced if your spouse has 
adult interactions, I'm censoring that there, with an animal. Yep, it's the law. It's on your screen, folks. If you want to read the real, the, the, unre- the uncensored version, it was right there. Uh, so anyway, um, and, and I was kind of supposing that too. Like, I obviously am not a lawyer, but I, I didn't see Ben Armstrong do anything illegal. He's just coming down and trying to get in touch with an individual, you know? You know, it's, it's not like SBF ever responded and told him to not try and contact him. You know, I just, so my suspicion was I didn't see him do anything wrong. And well, and even as, aside from that, so there's two things. It's like, is it illegal? And do we like what he's doing anyway? Because <laughs> the laws in the Bahamas, I didn't know, like, not that I know every law in the United States where I live, but in the Bahamas especially, I was like, what if they have something kooky that would protect people in a, a way that I disagree with, you know? Because not everything that's illegal, you know, has anything to do with ethics or morals necessarily anyway. But, uh, but yeah, so in, in looking at what he was doing, I was just like, first of all, like thankful that somebody's finally doing something. And then aside from that, did it look illegal to me? I, I didn't see anything illegal. And, and attorney Hogan seems to be thinking the same thing here. Now, as far as the Albany where the little, uh, butt nugget with a fro lives until apparently tomorrow, uh, here's what it looks like. There's this article. I'm not going to read the article, but it's got pictures. It's from the New York post. It's from, uh, about a week ago. And here you can see, like, it's just a gorgeous palace-looking place. It, it really is truly palatial-looking. Look at this. It's got, it's got a pool and just hot tub. My God, sunny skies here. It's just beautiful. You got the, the little fire pit going on there. My gosh. You got that fro that's on the screen. Now I'm going to get rid of that. Ah, let's get rid of that one, too. Um, then here, look at the inside, though. It's just incredible. And so this is where this guy is staying after defrauding people to the tune of billions of dollars that, that this is where the guy's staying right here look at that bedroom gorgeous looking place my god here's a nighttime view of that pool oh wouldn't wouldn't mind hanging out there right <laughs> so that's what he's doing but he's not going to be there for long because he has no actual money and he cannot stay there forever and then uh and then ben armstrong got the idea to uh have pizza delivered to sbf and i didn't see if he actually went through with this but he wrote the following Everyone tag SBF and ask him what he wants on his pizza. He's left me on read since midnight. Wake up, Sam. Hurry and get your pizza before your Addy kicks in and you don't want to eat. And that was as of 9.59 a.m. this morning. And he shared some more updates in the text here. So somebody created this meme. It looks like it's from The Shining, I guess. And he got Ben Armstrong uh, sticking in his head through the door there and there's sbf trying to protect himself with a with a knife because there's a there's a k on that so a knife and uh and then he, he actually sent this to sbf he sent this beam that somebody made on the internet to sbf i think that is hysterical and he saw it he said he just wrote let me in sam and he read it he read it at 12 it's on your screen he actually read the, the he saw the beam God, that part's funny that part's funny and then this morning um, ben Armstrong wrote to SBF again and said, Good morning, Sam. We still have to have a day to make this happen. Let's talk, bro. Having breakfast, what you doing? Left you a message, bro, trying to send you this pizza. What do you want? <laughs> he said he sent him, he sent him the meme from The Shining. And the guy actually saw it. And then he's just trying to send him some pizza. Like, that's very nice of Ben Armstrong. I mean, this is very, very nice. What a gesture. <laughs> My God. How is this real life even? Uh, and then there was also this. Ben Armstrong wrote, and there's a silent video playing here. Uh, we are at One Cable Beach investigating Barbara Freed and Joe Bankman's real estate portfolio. And so on, on this, it is kind of interesting. So I had seen reports that his parents had over $120 million in real estate bought, but, but like, like paid for, I think, through FTX. And so Ben Armstrong is looking at it. So he goes to this address, One Cable Beach. That's the address. And he talks to people there. Because no journalist is doing anything even close to that. So Ben Armstrong's doing. And from what he's told, uh, it, they actually don't own any property there. Kind of peculiar, right? Because there's this, there are stories like they have this massive, impressive uh, penthouse that they own at one cable beach, separate from, completely separate from the Albany, mind you. And, <clears throat> and uh, they don't, though. So it kind of makes you wonder, as, as Ben Armstrong ended up pointing out in this video clip, he's like, okay, so if they're just renting this place out at this address... Where's the $120 million in real estate? Where, where's that? Is it some sort of attempt to hide the money, which is probably not working at this point if so? Um, and then there was this. Uh, there, he shared the, Ben Armstrong shared this picture of an FTX golf cart, security golf cart, it looks like, and said, I have not been able to safely get on the property of the FTX headquarters, but I can tell you everyone within a mile of this property is in on the conspiracy. 
How much money did FTX donate to the private sports field next hit? Someone chased us off there even. LOL. That's insane. And it kind of gets back to, well, why aren't we seeing more? And which we're going to talk about. Um, there was also this tweet first, though, from Ben Armstrong. I uh, wrote, hey, guys, this is extremely important. Here is what we have been told. And this this gets down to it's like, why isn't why isn't SBF been arrested? Well, here's what Ben Armstrong has to say. No Bahamian res, uh, resident has filed a complaint for theft against SBF. This is why he has not been arrested by police here. If you are a resident and file a complaint, send the details to me and we will show it. Now, folks, if that's true, that's astonishing to me. Not one person filed a complaint in the Bahamas? Not one. Is there, is there a chance that anything was filed and it's maybe uh, getting filed under T for trash? Is, is that happening? Is any of that crap happening? I don't know, but that seems really peculiar. Nobody in all of the Bahamas, not one single human filed. Now, it gets even more interesting, though, because Attorney Hogan jumped in here, and it turns out you don't even have to be a resident. Check out what Attorney Hogan had to say in response to Ben Armstrong. He said, you don't have to be a Bahamian resident to file charges for fraud or theft. Is that what the authority said? See below defining person as an individual of any other place or state. And then he shared this part uh, also, I guess, from the penal code. So if that's what they're telling Ben Armstrong, according to uh, Attorney Hogan, that doesn't seem to pass the smell test. Because certainly people from the world over would be complaining about SBF. Individuals sure as hell would be. To the, I mean, billions and billions and billions of dollars. Yeah, not one. Yeah, no, no, no. Something ain't right here. Something just doesn't sit well with that. Um, and then there is also this. As you guys well know, I'm sure most of you are aware, uh, Kevin O'Leary has just been given a complete free pass to SBF. Now, of course, the, you know, Kevin O'Leary had invested money in FTX. I don't know if he's behind any of the, the criminal stuff that's been happening. Ben Armstrong things to, seems to think so. I just need to see proof if that's true. That's fine. Um, but uh, I remain neutral until I have seen actual proof on that. But he does seem to think that, uh, that Kevin O'Leary legitimately was in cahoots, effectively, with SBF and, and the whole FTX scheme, or at least parts of it anyway. And uh, and so he's he's been, he even said after the, the FTX went bankrupt, he's publicly said, and this is Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank fame, that Kevin O'Leary, yes. He said, you know, and I'm paraphrasing here, but... You know, if, if SBF came to me with another great crypto idea, I'd definitely invest. Well, wh how is that possible? He's an outright scammer and a fraud. How do you not know that? Unless you're in on this, like, why? I don't understand the response. And so David Gochstein, who's well known within the XRP community, wrote, We have BitBoy out in the Bahamas doing the work that mainstream media should be doing if they weren't paid off to, suppre uh, to uh, suppress this news by the 0.01%, as Kevin O'Leary called it. Ben Armstrong retweeted that and wrote, I may show up at Kevin's house next. Thank God Kevin O'Leary isn't in the Bahamas. Do you know how much water is there? Would be extremely dangerous. <laughs> you guys get the joke, right? <laughs> you know, because he's a shark, you get it. If there's water around, he could be in the water, but he can't get Ben Armstrong on land. So that was funny when I have to explain it, but that's what the joke is. I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> then there's this, but Kevin O'Leary saw that. He retweeted Ben Armstrong and wrote, hashtag crypto bozo. That's his new thing, apparently. Crypto bozo. If you show up at my house, you can take out the garage and I'll pay you. I think he meant garbage, but he wrote garage. And then he says, your first honest job, question mark? I invest in lots of entrepreneurs. Why not you? Ha oh, sick burden, Kevin O'Leary. Ha oh. But in the end, why, why aren't we seeing, why aren't we seeing anything happening here? Well, take a look at this from the Watcher Guru account. Just in, Bahamas Attorney General says there is an active criminal investigation into FTX. Okay... But then Coin Bureau reported this. The Bahamian authorities decided to address the FTX situation only when they realized half of crypto, crypto Twitter was heading to the island. Now, that's a job well done, Lance. And then there was a report by, um, I guess I didn't pull it up for this video, but uh, the, um, I can't remember what the name of the authority was. It's, it's whatever the authority is that, you know, handles things from a legal law perspective, you know, it'll, Arresting criminals, that, that literally police, it's an office of something. I can't remember what it's called. But anyway, with that major office in the Bahamas, the point is there was a uh, some sort of press conference of sorts this evening, and they talked about FTX, didn't mention SBF 
once. What in the ever-loving hell is that? And so that's why there's so many people understandably like, okay, are these people all in cahoots? And there, some people seem to think that there's sufficient evidence. I don't pretend to have all the answers. I'm just telling you what's going on, what the discussion is, what narratives out there from different perspectives of different people. It's wild stuff. Absolutely wild stuff. I just want justice to be done. This guy, this, this little butt nugget with a fro, he needs to be behind bars probably for the rest of his life. So I'm, I'm optimistic at some point that that's probably going to happen. I, just, I can't imagine him getting away with this literally forever, but it's strange that it's already been a couple weeks and he's just out there hanging out in a $40 million, nearly $40 million penthouse. Uh, okay. Because reasons, I guess. <sighs> but anyway, I'm glad that Ben Armstrong's doing what he's doing because this is what journalists are supposed to do. And journalists weren't doing it, so he did it. I applaud him for the initiative, honestly. And I think most people are really happy. Like, I looking through a bunch of the comments, there's some people like, oh, what are you doing? Or this or that. or And like kind of almost defending SBF. I'm just like, ugh. That's not what the vast majority of people on crypto Twitter think. Like almost everyone on crypto Twitter has the same perspective as me, which is like, good. We need to get to the bottom of this and nobody's even looking into this damn story. How is that possible? Gigantic story. I'll wrap up there, though. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Oh, I'd love to hear from you all on this one. That's for sure. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan.